It turns out if you ever begin programming a computer, there's an exercise you're always put through called the hello world. And what it is is sort of the minimal number of statements you would need to print the text hello world on the screen. So in the C language, for instance, you would use the word printf, a couple double quotes, and the string hello world in there, and a backslash n for a new line here to move the cursor to the next line. That would sort of be the hello world in computer programming. It turns out in electronics, the ability of flashing an LED or making an LED flasher could be considered the hello world of electronics. If you ever get an opportunity to get an Arduino, and we certainly hope you have and did as our video sequence progresses here, one of the very first exercises pretty much standard on the Arduino is to flash an LED. Because what it means if you can do that is you can connect the LED to a computer properly, get it powered up, you have an LED, you know how to connect it, you've downloaded the software, programmed in the Arduino flashing software, and so on and so forth to make an LED flash and then you can start playing on changing the rate of the LEDs flashing and that sort of thing and it turns out that the Arduino even has an, an LED built right on the board here that's connected directly to pin 13 so even if you don't have an LED you can just make the LED built on the Arduino flash that's definitely the hello world in the Arduino uh, scene there so it turns out in electronics again this breadboarding that we're doing and learning basic circuits here a good hello world for us would be to make our own LED flasher so what we're going to do in this video and the next is sort of think about a little bit how we would get a circuit to make an LED flash. What would we do? Well, remember what flashing is about. It's very different than just turning the LED on. I think in, in a very early video, we certainly turned an LED on. There might have been a switch in there where we put a 100 ohm protection resistor in with the LED, and this would just turn the LED on, but it doesn't flash. So the issue is how would you make it flash? And if you remember what flashing is, it's sort of like removing the power periodically so the LED can be on and then can be off and then on again but of course you don't want to do that too quickly because your eyes won't be able to see that the LED is actually flashing so it's kind of like difficult question how would you make an LED flash well we know we're going to need some timing here because we need some off periods and we need some on periods and we've been exposed a bit to the idea of flashing not idea of flashing, but of timing, of electronic timing with our RC circuits, haven't we? So for instance, if this is an R and this is a C right here, we know that this voltage here will grow very slowly or quickly with time, but in either case it's totally up to us, depending on the values of R and C that we choose. We can always get a graph that looks something like this. The voltage at that point is a function of time will grow, and this growth here depends on the product of R times C. So we've discussed that several times in recent videos. So as one idea for an LED flasher then, suppose we just took a standard RC circuit like this, and what if we put an LED right here? So what if we just put an LED like there's a flat edge of the LED, and we just sort of put one, and we grounded that side too. What would happen here? Well, as we know, in the RC circuit, when the capacitor is uncharged, it has zero volts across it. So essentially the point between here and here will be zero volts, and the LED will be off. But as we know, what starts to happen is as the capacitor starts to gain charge, its voltage will start to rise. So as charge starts to trickle onto these capacitor plates like this, its voltage will begin to rise. And we know LEDs turn on at about 2 volts or so, so it could be that when this point right here in the capacitor's charging cycle reaches 2 volts, the LED will come on. And then what will happen is when the LED comes on, almost like a thresholding device here, the charge on the capacitor will sort of drain off to ground here, the capacitor will be empty again, the LED will go off, and the capacitor can start charging again, and reach 2 volts again, and turn the LED on, then it will discharge, and so on, and keep repeating. Maybe that will work. Well, here's the circuit here. I have most of it built already here, just to save a bit of time. And what we have here is a 10K resistor, as our R, so it's a brown, black, orange, and it's feeding a 1,000 microfarad capacitor here. So the values that I've chosen here that you should have in your parts bin here, this is a 10K, and this is a 1,000 microfarad capacitor. And I just have them strung together like that. And I have a little piece of wire in here. Let me make sure the capacitor is fully discharged before we continue here there with my screwdriver. And I have a piece of wire in here that we're using just to go connect the LED with. So I'll just sort of grab this little LED right here. This turns out as a small blue one. We'll just sort of use that for fun. And we'll just sort of connect that in there as we have in the schematic here and see what happens. So let's just connect it and see what we get. So here we go. I'm going to connect it. Three, two, one. Remember there's a bit of timing coming on here. because it can, And there the LED comes on. 
Okay, so we saw the RC time constant happen, but for some reason the LED isn't going off. So it's still not flashing. Okay, it's not going to be quite that simple, looks like here. Uh, why isn't it flashing? Well, we can think of a couple of reasons here. The first one is that sort of when the capacitor becomes full, if you think of this dot right here as a junction, as current comes out of the batter here, it has a choice of where it wants to go. It can either go feed the capacitor or it can go to the LED. So it turns out when the capacitor is empty, no charge on it, the capacitor sucks up so much charge that most of it goes this way during the charging cycle. None of it turns right here and feeds the LED. But as the capacitor requires less and less charge as it becomes full, it doesn't need so much current going this way through the junction that is straight down and so the current that comes out of the battery just goes into the LED and the LED comes on. So the capacitor becomes full, the LED comes on, end of story. It didn't flash. So what is important about these, these RC or these resistor capacitor timing cycles is when the capacitor is fully charged we definitely saw a nice time constant like that. Let me put the screwdriver back in. We definitely see a nice off period. It's off, it's off, it's off and there it comes on again. We have a nice off period. Definitely the beginning of a flasher. So we have a nice off period. If only we can get it to stay on for a little bit and then go off, we'd have our hello world of electronics kind of done. It turns out what we need to do, we need to get it clever because we need a way of automating this screwdriver, this discharge process, don't we? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of wire here and just stick it in the ground. And I'm going to Put it, I'm just going to stick it over here on the column where the other side of the capacitor is right here. The other lead of the capacitor is right there like this. Actually, let me just reverse this. Let me just push it in there. I'll actually take the wire so you can see better. Here's the LED is going to come on. And I have this other piece of wire stuck on the positive terminal of the capacitor. And when I touch it to the negative terminal of the capacitor, see the LED goes off again. I'm able to discharge the capacitor. And I want to draw for you what that's all about because that will be key in our sort of idea here of how to get an LED to flash. Um, I keep touching the negative side of the capacitor there. That's just connected to that row of the breadboard and the LED keeps, keeps coming off and then it eventually comes back on again. So remember what a capacitor looks like when it's charged. It looks like this. Here's the capacitor here. And there's going to be a lot of charge on the plates. Like this. All charged up. And that's sort of what, what's happening when the LED's on. But if we want to discharge the capacitor what we would do is we would just take a piece of wire like this and so-called short out the capacitor like this. So this is just a piece of wire here that's connected directly across the leads of the capacitor. And when that happens, all of this charge can flow off the top plate all the way around to the other side. The capacitor can neutralize itself. It can get rid of all of its charge. So that's exactly what I'm doing here when I take this wire here and I touch it to the negative. So if you can see, one side is connected to the positive terminal of the capacitor. This side here is going to be connected to the negative the capacitor loses all of its charge and the LED goes off. And now that charging cycle can start all over again. So it turns out making these so-called oscillators or flashers just aren't that easy. It just isn't that easy. And that's why it's called the hello world of electronics. You're demonstrating definitely some command of electronics if you're able to make an LED flash. And so what we need to focus on, and we're going to do this in the next video or two, we're going to figure out what sort of electronics we can do to automate this process of discharging the capacitor. How can we automate this picture over here, this discharging of the capacitor? But of course, we don't want the wire on there when we want the capacitor to charge up again. So it's sort of a bit of cleverness that we have to come up with to automate this discharge process without getting in the way of the charging process. So stay tuned. Next one or two videos will reveal the secret of building an Hello World LED flasher.